Here we go. Three, two, one. Girlfriends is got to homeschooling. I'm turned up for today's interview with Jennifer Brady out of Illinois. So just a little bit about myself. I'm Angela Jordan Perry. I am in the uh, northern part of the state of South Carolina, homeschooling mom of eight children. Uh, now for 18 years, we're small farmers up here. And um, hey, good morning, Roberto. Welcome in. And so my purpose-driven life is to make a positive impact on thousands of homeschoolers worldwide. So that is my goal, and I'm excited to have our special guest here, Jennifer Brady. Woo! Yes. So Jennifer, are you ready to make it happen? I am ready to answer whatever questions you have for me, Angela. Good deal. Good deal. Well, let me tell you about Jennifer. Jennifer Brady is a homeschooling mother of 13 years. As a former teacher, she chose to homeschool her own children. Jennifer lives in Illinois, uh, Illinois, <laughs> is a wife, mother of four, and also works for, from home as a presidential diamond for doTERRA essential oils. Her interests include traveling, mentoring women, coaching other women in business, uh, and cooking. She currently has her crock pot recipe book on sale on Amazon, so she's going to tell us more about that too. So Jennifer, I have given Girlfriends' Guide to Homeschooling a brief bio about you, so please tell us more about yourself and how you actually got started in homeschooling. Okay, sure. So I have four children, and when my oldest uh, son turned three, I actually sent him to preschool. And it was a great preschool. It was a small private school. But what I, uh, and we actually had great teachers, but what I found out was that I ended up wanting to be there all the time. I was volunteering. I was a room mom. <laughs> I was coordinating activities. I was actually on the, um, the board of directors for the preschool. And so I kind of thought, this is silly. Um, I want to be with him all the time, even though he, there was nothing wrong with where he was going. It was a great place. I just felt like the Lord was leading me to pull him out and homeschool him. Um, my thought was when I was done having children, I, they would all go to school and I would um, go back to the classroom myself, which has never happened. But um, I pulled him out and I always thought if this doesn't work for us, I will put him in school. I had an open mind and that was 13 years ago and we have loved homeschooling ever since we have grown. Um, I started out when I started homeschooling, I set up the room in our, a room in our home mm -hmm. to look like a classroom. We had like a table and a little desk and bookshelves. And, um, as I have matured and come through the years, I realized that I don't want my homeschool to look like a school. School is fantastic if that's what you choose and there's nothing wrong with that choice but for me I just wanted to be really hands-on we do a lot of real life learning we read from real books we um, do a lot of field trips and so that is um, that's kind of my journey and here I am um, 13 years later just this past year my son my oldest son um, <laughs> the three-year-old um, he went to high school and so that's been a real adjustment in our life so now I'm only homeschooling three of my children um, one of goes to high school and honestly I kind of thought, oh, going from four to three would be a lot easier, you know, when you're taking one out of the equation, but it's actually made it harder because now I have to live on somebody else's schedule. <laughs> I have to have him at school. Then I come back and homeschool my other children. Then I have to pick him up. And so actually having one in school while he is great and successful and loving it, has lots of friends, um, it's really it's um, it's not as easy because you have to be on somebody else's schedule and before I was only living in my own schedule. So that's where we are. Yeah, so how old are your children, Jennifer? Yeah, one is gonna be 16 this weekend. My next one is 13. Then I have a 10 year old and a seven year old. Okay, 16, 13, 10, and seven. And so you went, you said went off to high school. So that lets me know that you, although you're homeschooling, definitely pro homeschool, that didn't mean that you were, uh, you know, against public school. No, no, not at all. I, I think that, um, you know, homeschooling is a choice for everyone, uh, private school, public school, whatever it is you feel like God's leading you to do. Um, just like other things in life, there's not a right or a wrong. It's just your only your own right or wrong for what's good for you. And yep, so I've got a kiddo in school and three at home. And um, yeah, for sure. I support teachers. They work really hard. I know what that's like. And um, they definitely don't make enough money. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. How was your son's adjustment into into public school? Because he had been homeschooled his whole life, correct? Correct. And it's actually, he actually goes to a private school. Um, but cool. yes, um, it was, you know what? It was smooth. He went to school that first week. And by Friday night, I had um, like 10 of his friends over at my house. He jumped right in and soccer and basketball. And um, it was just a very smooth transition. The one thing that I, that has been hard is that he wants to do his schoolwork and then be done. He doesn't want to sit at a desk when everybody else is working when he's done. That's been hard for him. And the other thing is, is he's not used to having to get up at a certain time in the morning. So that's been a bigger adjustment, too, is being on somebody else's time schedule. But it's been a good discipline for him to learn to get up and be somewhere on time. And so it's been very smooth. Good, good deal. So tell me, the, my curious question for all those who have once been – a teacher in a public sector, private sector, that's their degree of study, you know, to mm -hmm. be in education. Did that really help you in your transition, if you can remember back 13 years ago? Did it really help you in your transition to homeschooling? That's a great question. Um, I don't know that it did because I felt like I was really locked in that I wanted homeschool to look like regular school. I felt like we should sit down at 8.30, get our work done, be working till 3, have workbooks, when in reality, my children do better when we are cooking and measuring and doing field trips and doing hands-on stuff and um, reading real books and not um, blurbs from a textbook. So it was actually harder to adjust than somebody who had never been in in a classroom, I felt like, because I don't want my homeschool to look like school. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I've mm -hmm. heard that quite often from interviewees that I've had who yeah. have taught in school. They say the degree did not help them necessarily mm -hmm. to come into teaching um, at home their own children. Actually, it may have been a greater hindrance yeah. um, in some sort of way. I mean, you have that knowledge of education, but you get stuck in the rut of what you were trained to do as far as schooling. So you're saying the same, 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 same thing. Interesting, interesting. Hi, we're Keisha, welcome on. So um, tell us, you mentioned the words hands-on a couple of times and real life learning. What yeah. does that look like, Jennifer, in your school? Yeah, so we are big fans of um, doing things hands-on. So, for example, um, I taught my kiddos to count to 100 by playing shoots and ladders with them. And I don't push reading like at three or four or five. I push reading when they're ready. We go to the library. We read lots of books. We read recipes. Um, when we're learning about the ocean, we go to, to the ocean for a trip. Or when we're learning about dinosaurs, we go to the Creation Museum or to the Ark. You know, we love to see things and touch things and do things and not just read about them from a textbook. So I'm a big fan of science experiments and books and hands-on. And um, we do something in the spring, which we're going to do it again this coming up spring, is I try to fit 30 field trips in in 60 days. And so we um, finish up our curriculum in the morning, and then we get we go on all these crazy, like, nature and um museums and I feel like my kids get so much out of those 60 days as as much as they do the rest of the school year so wow oh wow that is very interesting so ooh, lots of questions okay so all right I'm curious are you big in curriculum I hear feedback there I think I'm off okay so are you big in curriculum in your schooling uh, or just basically life yeah. learning we kind of are both. I don't think that you can do school with no curriculum. At least, I mean, some people can. That I, I can't. I need. I feel like I do need some curriculum. So we actually go to classical conversations on Tuesdays. We haven't all, always done that. Um, we ha um, didn't do that for ten years, but the last three years we've done it. And having a junior higher, having smaller kids, it's worked well. All learning the same material and being in the same community, so that's been great for us. So we do do classical conversations, and each of my children has their own reading curriculum and their own math curriculum because there's you know there's no way I can teach algebra or fractions too too well without a curriculum so we do have curriculum but we don't do a lot of like history curriculum or social studies we get that by reading real books like we'll read um the diary of Anne Frank to learn about World War II or right now we're reading the secret garden um 
So that's kind of what I mean by that. Gotcha, gotcha. Now you have got to tell us about this 30, uh, 30 field <laughs> trips in 60 days. So when you do that, are you actually schooling, um, you know, quote unquote, you know, through curriculums or actual study? Or is that your time of just, is that considered your schooling time? I still am having them do their math and their reading because um, we want to, you know, complete the year out. Um, but we do a lot of, I have like all of the Jonathan Park um, creation DVDs. We have a lot of stuff from Answers in Genesis. We have a lot of like Stories of Great Americans, your story hour. And so as we're going to these field trips, we listen to our classical conversation CDs in the car. My my kiddos learn really well by listening and hearing. And, um, and so we do a lot of audio learning in the car. I always call it travel school. Um, so for my job, I travel a lot and I teach classes at conferences and conventions and I'm an essential oil educator. And I take my kiddos with me almost all the time, and we listen to learning CDs in the car. And um, so they're still learning, but they also get 30 field trips. Like, we've done things like the Military Museum and the Ark, and we'll go to, like, a bird sanctuary. And so they're, they're getting a lot of hands-on learning, but at the same time still doing some other stuff, too. Gotcha, gotcha. When you do on the field trips, are they responsible for writing a paper or research or something? What are what do they have to do with that learning, or or do they have yeah. to do anything with? You know, that learning particularly? Yeah, that's a great question. I, we've definitely kept a nature journal before. So some of our field trips, like I said, are things like um, nature walks, or we've okay. gone to preserves, animal preserves, or the zoo, or bird sanctuaries, and I'll have them do drawings, um, do, maybe do some labeling. Um, we, a lot of times, like when we went to for example, when we went to the Creation Museum over by Cincinnati, I had them do some reading from Ken Ham on dinosaurs and Genesis, um, stuff like that. So I try to tie it in. And we also do a lot of discussion. I feel like kiddos learn from the adults around them. And so we do a lot of just chatting about what did we learn about today? What, you know, what is it? For example, we just a few weeks ago went out to Arizona. And while we were in Arizona, we visited several um, national parks, and I want to tell you about that in just a second, but we have a national park passport, and for every national park, you get a stamp, and most of the national parks are free. Some of them are, um, you could pay, but they're really inexpensive, so we got to tour where the cliff dwellers lived. We went to the petrified forest, and they got stamps in their passport, so they're seeing all this, but when the park ranger told us about the petrified forest, he was saying, you know, this came from millions of years and evolution, and and we got back in the car and, you know, we were just chatting. What do you think this came from? And, you know, they all said, we think this came from the Great Flood. This is in the Bible. That's why we have petrified wood. And so we got to have all these discussions about science and history and Bible. And um, I just feel like that's how kiddos learn by by doing and seeing and discussing. Yes, yes, that is good. Very good. Hey, you guys, yeah. you ladies. All our girlfriends that's on today, we have Jennifer Brady with us out of Illinois. Woo! And so I am so excited to have her here today. You all make sure you hit the share button. Get this out to other girlfriends so they can see uh, this platform um, that we're presenting to extend our village and give homeschoolers a voice and to share the, hey, we're not crazy riddles keeping our kids <laughs> locked up in our house or something like that that our kids are learning and they're thriving and they're transitioning well to uh, back into uh, a public school setting or private school setting like Jennifer has shared with us with her story. So you all, please share, share, share. Get this out to everyone on your pages and in your group. So let's dig a little deeper, uh, Jennifer, with some specific questions for you, okay? Okay. Um, let me tell you, when uh, what was your very first – you gave us a small idea of what your – first start of homeschooling was like it was set up like a you know a, a classroom setting and that type of thing so was your first year do you look back now do you feel like that was a success what did that look like for you uh, 13 years ago yeah. So my first year, my kids were really small. I had a baby and a three-year-old. And so I was doing preschool with him. Um, and I bought um, the Abeka curriculum to do with him. I feel like it was successful. He learned to read pretty quickly. Um, he's the oldest and the firstborn, so you know how that is. Um, it was pretty successful. I think if I was starting over now, knowing now 
um, knowing then what I know now, I'd probably do it a little differently. I'd probably be a little less um, curriculum oriented and a little bit more um, experience oriented. But, you know, coming out as someone with an education background, pulling a child out of preschool, you think that you have to make it look like that. And so I would say is it was for sure a success. He's a strong reader. He's got strong skills, but I would I would probably do it differently now. Okay. And what are your, what are your daily habits, uh, Jennifer? What are, what are the routines of your day as you prepare and self care for yourself and then along yeah. with your children and the schooling? Yeah, this is one of my favorite topics for moms because I feel like as a mom and as a homeschooling mom, especially you give and you give and you give and you, and it's so easy for moms to not take care of themselves. And just, I really feel strongly that you cannot pour out into others with an empty cup from an empty cup. And so, um, there's lots of things I do for self-care. I'm a big advocate of self-care. Um, I get up every morning, um, Usually I try to be up by six and my kiddos don't wake up for a couple hours. So I love to take a bath, an Epsom salt bath with my essential oils. I, I sit down with, um, with God's word and I just, I, I study God's word and I, I'm committed every day to read a chapter of some kind of personal development book. And so I do my, I do my reading. I feel like I can't be a good wife or a mom or a good leader in my organization if I'm not a, if I'm not a strong leader and bettering myself. And so, um, I, I go to the chiropractor once a week for trigger point therapy for my back. I'm, I get massages a couple times a month. Um, I love just taking a day or two a month with my little girl just to go get, get my nails done and get a pedicure. Um, it's just what I do for my self-care because I know that if I don't take care of myself, I'm cranky. And I'm not a good mom. And so I think that's important for moms to remember that if you, if you want to be your best self, you have to take time for yourself. Yes, yes, that is huge, mamas, girlfriends, guy friends, but it's huge that huge that we take care of ourselves. Self care yeah. is has to be has to be a priority uh, because we can't, like Jennifer said, you cannot pour out to others from an empty cup. So uh, we got to be filled up. So um, thank you for those suggestions. You all make sure you write those down and, and implement those. Um, you know, normally in homeschooling sphere, you know. Well, I should say in today's time, it takes normally two incomes to survive and thrive. And mm -hmm. um, so oftentimes we're one income family or the mom does pick up a business like you have. Tell mm -hmm. us, how do you juggle homeschooling, self-care and thriving in your business? I mean, now you're, you know, presidential diamond, you said. Uh, yeah, presidential mm -hmm. diamond and uh, your company, doTERRA. How do you uh, manage all of that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I really just feel like it's by God's grace um, that I that I'm able to do all that. I um, I work on my business some in the morning before my kiddos get up, or in the afternoon once their homeschool's done. Um, I will do that sometimes in the evening. I go and I teach classes. Um, my the thing is now that I've got boys in sports, I've got a, ch a girl in ballet. It's really a juggling act. Um, we are a one income family. Um, I retired my husband in 2016. Um, so for eight years, my husband and I were the directors of a nonprofit camp and conference center for children and for pastors. And we actually homeschooled and lived on the grounds of our ministry. So by being in ministry those eight years, I learned. <laughs> very quickly to live very frugally. Um, and I didn't start a business actually for any kind of financial reason. I started a business because I had a really like a life changing experience. I, um, I, I was introduced by my friend Shanoa who introduced me to you, um, Angela, um, my good friend Shanoa Alamu. Um, she introduced me in 2012 to doTERRA oils when I was facing a possible hysterectomy and the oil saved me from a hysterectomy after four C-sections. And so um, Shanoa has been a world changer for me. And so with that, I was just able to share with others and God just kept putting people in our path that needed help. Um, and so that was 2012. And here we are, 2018. I have a team of about 10,000 women. And it's my passion in life really to mentor women and coach women and let them know that they can do this. They can be a wife and a mom and an entrepreneur. You don't have to live in a box. You can live out your dreams and still be good at it. But I just want to be 
really transparent and say about a year ago, I had to admit to myself that I can't do it all. And so I really, I have to be honest with you and tell you that one day a week I bring in a helper every Wednesday. I have an amazing lady that comes in and cleans my house and does my laundry, changes my sheets, puts my laundry away and pretty much puts my life back together because I often have a stack of dishes, a stack of laundry, because when you're homeschooling, your kids are always home, <laughs> always. You, right. You're really never without a break. And so your house is never going to look like you want it to look. And you just have to lower your standards a little bit sometimes. Right. Right. Absolutely. That is great. That's lovely. Woo. <laughs> Help in the home. Yes. That would be great, great, great. <laughs> Try that with, uh, uh, you know, seven in the home. <laughs> Yes. So, um, tell us, uh, Jennifer, take us back to, um, if you can, take us back to the worst, worst, worst day of homeschooling. Um, the day that was so bad. Um, if you, you know, you think about that, if you want to think about it, <laughs> it was so bad that you're like, I, I can't do this. I I'm done. I am completely done. I'm fried. Tell us yeah. what that day was looked like, but you didn't quit. You didn't quit, and that's why you are a successful homeschooling mom 13 years now. Yeah, that's a great question because they always say you don't, you can't quit on a bad day, right? If you quit, it has to be a good day. Um, and there's been a lot of bad days. There's been a lot of good days, but there's been a lot of bad days. I can remember. So I bought a set of books called, um, I, they're like, what your first grader needs to know, what your second grader needs to know. And I can remember buying that set, and I can remember setting down with it and picking it up for one of my children and reading what grade they're in and thinking, they can't do this, they can't do this, but they can do this. And this is in a different grade ahead, and they can do this, but they can't do this. And I remember, like, crying, thinking, like, I'm a failure. I'm not on the same learning schedule as a public school school. Um, but then it hit me that I don't have to be, I don't have to be, we, we live in freedom and God's grace and we can do things as our children are ready for them. So my third grader might be ready for, you know, algebra, but my fifth grader might still be stuck on multiplication. It's because every child learns differently and we have to. So once I realized that, um, I'm, I'm living in freedom and grace and I'm not living on somebody else's schedule or in somebody else's box um, that freed me from a lot of bad days that, you know, with homeschooling kids argue, the house is a mess. Sometimes your kids aren't always just because they're home. All, they're not going to be always best friends every day. Just like all children, they, they have issues. And so, yeah, for sure. There's been a lot of bad days in there too. Yeah. Yeah. So conversely, you know, you described those bad days. Conversely, what does, Take us to your most proudest moment in homeschooling. The day was like, ah, this is why I do what I do, all the sacrifices. Take us to that day, uh, Jennifer. Yeah, there's been several of those too, but the one that stands out in my mind is um, my third child was born early. He was born about six weeks early when my placenta detached, and because of that, in, with normal um, development, there's been a few developmental delays that are not going to be lifelong, but, you know, there'll just be some catch-up work. And so I remember when teaching him to read, my first child read really early, chapter books really early, my second child just a little bit behind that, and then I had my third child who wasn't reading on the schedule that everyone else said that they should read on. And so I took him and paid out of pocket a lot of money to get him tested and found out that there might be some dyslexia and um, some other stuff going on from being born early. And so I actually started working with Kumon Learning Centers with Katherine Parsons here in Springfield. And we started doing some pretty intense um, reading tutoring. And I just backed off. And I thought, you know what, when he's going to read, He's going to read when he's ready because he's not going to go through life not reading. He's got parents who read to him. He's going to read. And so I think that day when he picked up a book and read it to me, that was it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you, that is huge what you just said is that, and I always tell moms, you know, we get, we're, we get concerned about all these things because we allow ourselves to be on these schedules that someone told, told us that's the schedule. Yeah. We get all tied up in a knot over these things, and um, 
and not, you know, like a kid not learning how to tie their shoes. I, I tell parents, I'm like, listen, they will not be in the fifth grade and not tie their shoes or potty training. Yeah. They will not go and be this age and not pot potty train. They will get it when they're ready and they will get yes. it. And so right. we just got to trust. We got to trust that they would get it type of thing. So that that's huge. So, yeah, we have a question from Joyce Ann Day. She says, how involved is your husband in your homeschooling, Jennifer? Hi, Joyce. Um, that's a great question. So he's really involved in things like I don't love upper level math. And so I have a seventh grader who is in math, and math is not my strong point, so he'll often sit down and do his math homework with him. Um, we also are at the point now where we have our high schooler going to sports, and then we have other kiddos in sports and piano lessons and baseball. So he's often such a good help of taking children to activities when we have kids going in different directions at the same time. So while he is not the one that actively sits down and teaches them the lessons he is definitely a huge support and it, it would be very hard that with the kind of schedule we keep and the amount of kids we have and the activities we're in to do it without him so that's kind of the role he plays beautiful beautiful thank you for that question Joyce so all you girlfriends welcome again this is girlfriends is guide to homeschooling with Angela Jordan Perry I am here with our special guest Jennifer Brady out of Illinois. And uh, so if you're not familiar with Girlfriends is Guide to Homeschooling, this is a beautiful platform for moms and dads, homeschooling moms and dads all over the country, all over the world uh, to connect and share their voice with this community to let people know that, hey, we are here, we are doing well, we are thriving, our kids are learning, and we all have a different story to tell. So we have Jennifer Brady with us today sharing her story. So you all be sure to go over to Girlfriend's Guide to Homeschooling. Be sure to uh, like and follow, or if you prefer YouTube, Girlfriends has got the homeschooling there. That's an S and then apostrophe. So when I go live, we go live with these amazing interviewees like Jennifer. You would get the notifications and you can join in and hear uh, another homeschooling person's voice. So thank you, thank you. Now, these questions as we go to the end of our show, Jennifer, these are some questions just to pick your brain. You can give a quick two answer, you know, two sentence uh, answer to it. So just to pick your brain your brain on some of these things. Um, tell us, what is your favorite quote uh, that helps you through homeschooling, Jennifer? Oh. Oh. Hmm. I don't know. I'd have to think about that one. Um, I love scripture. And so just um, scripture is about, like, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Um Scriptures about letting the Lord fight your battles for you. So I often go to scripture for, for stuff like okay. that. Very good. Do you plan to homeschool all the way through homeschool with all your children, although your first has been a little different? What is your plans for your next three? Yeah, I plan on homeschooling them as long as I can. Um, if they want to go to high school, we'll definitely have that conversation. But as of right now, my seventh grader is saying that he – doesn't want to do that. So as a, we'll see, but yeah, as long as I can. Okay. And so now tell us something that's unique to the Brady homeschool that's unique to you all that you have included in your homeschool that, you know, it's your trademark um, thing that you all do. Probably just the amount of travel we do. I get to travel a lot when I speak for doTERRA. And instead of getting babysitters or um, helpers, I take my kids with me. And so they get to see the country and see the field trips and just get to experience a lot of people. And so, you know, people always say that homeschoolers aren't socialized, but the real definition of socialization is being able to interact with people of all ages and be comfortable talking to everyone, no matter where they're from and what color their skin is, where they live, being able to interact with everyone as humans. And um, my children can do that because they get to travel a lot. So I'm proud of that. Good deal. What what curriculum or book, Jennifer, that you can suggest, you know, that's on your homeschool library that you can say every home needs to have this curriculum or a CD or this something, this book? Share with us on that. 
Yeah, I would recommend um, as far as science, any of the Apologia or Answers in Genesis curriculum. We love that. For math for children, we love Horizons. We love the workbooks and um, the spiral method for math. I love the classical conversations material. And for a lot of years, we used Trail Guide to Learning. Um, and that's kind of a lot like a Sunlight or a My Father's World all-inclusive literature-based curriculum. We did that before we came to classical conversations. But if you're starting out and you're looking for a curriculum, I would highly recommend Trail Guide to Learning. Okay. I've not heard of that Trail Guide to Learning. You said it's like, um, what is it comparable to? It's like a sunlight or a My Father's World. So basically you read a real book, and then every child has an assignment in every subject tailored to their grade level, vocabulary, spelling, geography, stuff like that. Gotcha. Okay. All inclusive. Okay. Very good. Um, what is the best piece of advice you have received in your homeschooling journey, Jennifer? Oh, for sure. I've had moms tell me who are older than me and have already walked this journey that don't stress yourself out. Your children, just like you said, they're going to get it in their own time, whether it's potty training or, like you said, tying their shoe or reading or anything, they're going to get it. And just because somebody who calls themselves an expert says that they need to do it in that time, they don't know your child. And the other piece of advice that was given to me is boys need to move. I, three of my four children are boys and they, you know, we are a better family and I am a better mom once they get out and jump on the trampoline and ride their bike and run and play and doing that for a few minutes before they do school. They have so much energy. So boy, let your boys move. Don't sit them down and make, expect them to stay at a desk all day. Let them move. And who cares if they're bouncing on their little trampoline while they're doing their vocabulary words. That's good for them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What is a, a favorite book that you have read to help you prepare for homeschooling or at least throughout this homeschooling journey that you can suggest to our viewers? Oh, boy, there's been a lot. Um, I can't think of one specific off the top of my head, but I would just say The Five Love Languages is one of my favorite books. Um, just learning what your child's love language is and being able to love them and fill their love tank in the way they need to be loved. Um, I also really like Creative Correction by Lisa uh, Welchel. Now, some I don't love everything in the book, but what I love about it is that she's got specific scripture that deals with different behaviors. So say your children are lying. You can just open the book and say, hey, here's a scripture about lying. Let's chat about why you did this and why it's not okay. Um, and then, of course, the Bible is my number one. Yes. Okay. All right, Jennifer, we are on our last question, the million-dollar question. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready, Angela. Good deal. So if you had to start all over again, Jennifer, but you have your current wisdom, knowledge, skills, convictions, and you had to go back to homeschooling day number one. You kind of mentioned it a little bit, but what would be some clear things that you would change or some clear things that you would implement in your homeschooling journey at this point? Yeah, I would tell moms like that who are starting out, um, just love your children, meet them where they are, Realize that they are all um, different little human beings. They're not cookie cutters. Not all kids can sit at a desk. Not all kids test well. Um, I would be more lenient, probably. I would do more hands-on, more science, more field trips. Um, I would be less curriculum heavy and just just tell myself, chill out. You're doing a good job with your kids. You're their mom. You know what's best for them. You love them like no one else is going to love them, and they're going to get what they need, so don't stress out. That's what I would say to my old self. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Hey, listen, any last word of advice you want to share with our um, viewers and those who are on replay? Um, Number three things. One, any last words of advice you want to give us? Uh, number two, uh, what is it that you have your hands in that you would like to share and get out to the homeschool community that you're very active in so that we can extend our village out to Illinois? And then three, uh, oh, how can they get in contact with you? <laughs> what are some sure. things that they want to continue the discussion and ask questions? Um, how yeah. can they reach out to you? 
Yeah, thanks for asking that. So my the message I would say to, to moms who are homeschooling is that you are doing a good job and you're making a difference in your children's lives. So don't give up even when it's hard. And just remember that your children, um, while you think you might be doing a bad job, your children love you and think that you're doing a great job. So just love them and stick with it. And you know, when you're having a hard day, just go to the park and go to the zoo or do something that doesn't stress you out, but don't stress out. Um, and as far as um, something I have my hands in, um, other than my family and my husband, um, my two passions in life are um, become, being an essential oil educator. And I love sharing essential oils with other people. I've had some really life-changing experiences. So if you or help you or send you free samples or help you try to figure out um, any kind of health issues you're going on, we love like Intune for homeschooling and balance for focus and stuff like that. Um, the other thing that I really am passionate about is I love to meal plan and cook for my family. And so um, I love to use my crock pot. It's my, one of my favorite things. I even take it on vacation with me. And I have a crock pot book on Amazon. It's just a little small, it's 30 of our favorite family recipes. It is called um, 30 Easy Crock Pot Recipes by Jennifer Brady. And if you have a Kindle, you can download it for free from Amazon or you can get the ebook of it. It's really inexpensive. So um, those are my passions other than my kiddos. Good deal. And how can our viewers get in contact with you if they like to continue the conversation or ask you questions? Yeah, they can reach me through Facebook. Um, Jennifer Brady is my Facebook name or you can contact me through my public doTERRA oil page. It's simply Jen, J-E-N. Okay, very good. Woo, girlfriends, we have been with Jennifer Brady out of Illinois. Just remember that you are the average sum of the five people you hang out with. And you have been hanging out with Jennifer Brady today. So keep up the momentum. Continue to connect with other homeschool families. That's going to bring a positive impact and to your homeschooling and to all that you do, um, search them out. Reach out to your village. Grow your village and um, make sure you connect with them. And then you be sure to be that positive impact that they are looking for um, as well that they can draw from you. So, um, again, be sure to go to our Girlfriends has Got to Homeschooling page. Hit like and share so when we have other great interviewees like Jennifer Brady, you all get that notification. Go to YouTube and subscribe to Girlfriends has Got to Homeschooling as well. That's an S and then apostrophe. So all of my girlfriends and guy friends on here today, just remember that to touch, to teach a child is to touch a life. And as we homeschool, we not only touch a life, we shape the future through our efforts of homeschooling. So keep making a positive impact in your children day after day and year after year. So Jennifer, Girlfriends has got to homeschooling. We are grateful to you and we appreciate you for giving of your time, your energy, your wisdom, and just making a positive impact today on thousands of homeschoolers <laughs> worldwide. So thank you so much, Jennifer. Uh, God bless you. Thank you, Angela. Thanks for your platform. I appreciate what you're doing. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, girlfriends, uh, you, I hope probably you found this very interesting to have this time with Jennifer and myself. Um, you all have a blessed day. Continue, continue, continue the good job you're doing in your home. You can do it. You can do it. So, I will have all Jennifer's notes um, available in all of her, her wisdom, her nuggets, insights in the shows. So um, be looking for that, her book, her information, how to get in contact with her. All of that will be in uh, the show notes. So thank you for joining me today. We have our next interview on Wednesday, um, again, and on Friday. But all that information and who will be up next will be on the Girlfriends' Guide to Homeschooling. So you all have a great one. Uh, have a blessed day. And may all you do prosper. Take care and thank you for joining. Again, I'm Angela Jordan Perry with Girlfriends' Guide to Homeschooling. Bye-bye now. Bye. -bye